When you go through the supermarket, what looks like this cornucopia of variety and choice is not. There is an illusion of diversity. There are only a few companies involved, and there are only a few crops involved. What really surprised me most as I followed that food back to its source, I kept ending up in the same place, and that was a cornfield in Iowa. So much of our industrial food turns out to be clever rearrangements of corn. Corn has conquered the world in a lot of ways. I mean, it is a remarkable plant. A hundred years ago, a farmer in America could grow maybe 20 bushels of corn on an acre. Today, 200 bushels is no problem. That's an astonishing achievement, for which breeders deserve credit, for which fertilizer makers deserve credit, for which pesticide makers all deserve credit. In the United States today, 30% of our land base is, is being planted to corn. That, that's largely driven by government policy, government policy that, in effect, allows us to produce corn below the cost of production. The truth of the matter is, is we're paid to overproduce, and it was caused by these large multinational interests. The reason our government's promoting corn is the Cargills, the ADMs, Tyson, Smithfield, they have an interest in purchasing corn below cost of production. They use that interest and that extensive amount of money they have to, to lobby Congress to give us the kind of farm bills we now have. The farm bill, which should really be called the food bill, codifies the rules of the entire food economy. Farm policy is always focused on these commodity crops because you can store them. We encourage farmers to grow as much corn as they could grow, to get big, to consolidate. We subsidize farmers by the bushel. We produced a lot of corn, and they came up with uses for it. We are now engineering our foods. We know where to turn to for certain traits, like mouthfeel and then flavors, and we bring all of these pieces together and engineer new foods that don't stale in the refrigerator, don't develop rancidity. Of course, the biggest advance in recent years was high fructose corn syrup. You know, I would venture to guess, if you go and look on the supermarket shelf, I'll bet you 90% of them would contain either a corn or soybean ingredient. And most of the time, it'll contain both. Corn is a great raw material. You get that big, fat kernel of starch, and you can break that down and reassemble it, and you can make high-fructose corn syrup, and you can make maltodextrin and diglycerides and xanthan.